Hey guys, it's Jordan with another vintage project today. This is a Project One uh, turntable from about 1983-84. It's a belt drive. Uh, this was purchased at an estate sale. Really don't know the condition. Didn't plug it in. So we're going to show you the basics of servicing a turntable, a belt drive one, and what to check, what to look for, etc. So the first thing you want to do is ignoring the needle. That's really the last thing you check. We're going to take the dust cover off. And we're going to take the mat off, and we're going to take the platter off, and we're going to see what's underneath. Okay. So this is a fairly common thing we see. This is what you call belt goo. The belt's decomposed and turned into tar. And it's also all over the rim of the platter. Looks like it's been ground into the uh, plinth a little bit. So that will need to be cleaned off. But uh, before we do that... If your machine uses a DC motor, which would be identified somewhere on the machine, in this case FG servo, uh, sometimes they'll say DC servo, anything like that, you got to check the motor. In this case, this motor's frozen. So that's not good. Uh, it's a dry bearing. Not very good at all. So what we need to do is I've got some super high speed. Uh, bearing oil, aka zoom spout, good stuff. And I'm going to inject the top bearing with it, and then we're going to manipulate the motor bearing and see if uh, it comes back to life. Because really, if this motor's shot, there's no point in proceeding. So we'll work the bearing up and down. There's another thing you can do. You can take the bottom off and you can squirt fader lube into the bottom where the brushes are and that will clean the brushes up and also act as a lubricant for the bottom bearing. We may do that too. With a DC motor, uh, you pretty much have to make sure the motor's alive, obviously, because it's not worth your time if it isn't. And we'll see what kind of servo motor it is. Usually it's a Panasonic based or something like that. So that's one thing to address. Also check your platter bearing, make sure it turns smoothly. A little bit of resistance is okay, that's usually just the viscosity of the oil. Uh, assuming your motor checks out okay, move the arm over and observe the end of play trip and see if you get to about maybe five inches from the end of the record it starts to move, which this one does. Also check your cueing, make sure your cueing goes up and down nice and slow and smooth. We're going to cycle the machine using our hand to see if it returns to the armrest. You're just check checking basic functions of the turntable to see if it, under its own power, assuming the motor was good, it would function. So that's an auto return, so that's good. So the next thing we need to do is get into the machine and see if we can get the motor lubricated long enough so that it'll work. So let's get the bottom off this thing. Okay, so we got the screws out. We're just going to drop the bottom down. And it's pretty much like I thought. It uses a Panasonic type motor there. We may be able to pop the cover off and get some lubrication inside. Um, obviously the service position is on its top and to avoid crushing the tone arm what I do is, is I put a sandbag down about where the arm's going to go. And flip and rotate it like that. That way, the arm is protected from smacking against the table and you don't damage the gimbal. So that's, uh, that's something you might consider doing. I get into the Panasonic motors. There's a little screw on the side right there. You can probably see if the camera will focus. You take that off. This cover comes off, exposing the little tiny DC motor inside and you should be able to get it apart enough to the point where we can get cleaner in. So let's get the cover on the motor off and then we'll proceed from there. Once you get the cover off, there's a little rubber insulator that acts as a dampener and a, uh, an insulator from the leads. Just remove that and then you find out that it's still stuck in there. As you can see, there's just a tiny little motor in there that does the whole shebang and that you're going to have to take that apart a little bit. Um, so the next thing we have to do is take the three screws loose from the top to pull the inside of the motor out 
and maybe I'll have to pry the uh, pulley off of it too in order to get that out of there. But we'll see. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any holes to get lubricant into right now. I could take the board off. But there's more screws around the perimeter of the smaller motor that takes the main cap off to access the brushes. But the next step is to get the motor out. So with the motor out, you can see that now the two pieces will separate. If you push down on the pulley, the motor will pop out of its housing. And you've got a top insulator piece here that you can separate if you want. Exposing the uh, main bearing shaft there. So that you have more screws here around the perimeter, which then separates the uh, stator and stuff from the inside. You will need to remove the shaft. And if I can get the camera on something uh, to hold it steady while I do that, I'll show you. The way that I usually do this is with a set of pliers like this. And you get underneath the uh, motor and you very carefully and slowly just rock it to get it loose. You don't want to use too much force or you'll uh, bend the motor shaft. This one is pretty tight on there. I don't see or feel any set screw, so I don't think that that's going to be the cure. You can also try with the pliers on one side and the flat blade on the other applying some additional force. Yeah, it's on there pretty tight. I can hear stuff snap cracking and popping in there, so I don't want to risk breaking that. However, what you can do is you can take the little screws out and you can back out the rear bearing assembly with the brushes enough to get lubricant in there and then hopefully that will get your motor free moving enough that we can put it back together and test it. That's the whole point of this. On a DC motor turntable, if the motor's no good, don't even bother. You can try adapting a motor to it on a fixed rate power supply or designing your own servo, whatever you want to do, you can do it. But it seems to me to be a waste of time unless you really love this turntable. And this screw doesn't want to come out, so I'm going to slide my fingernail under it to see if I can get it to come up as I turn. I don't want to come up, so we'll try a Exacto underneath the uh, screw as we turn to see if it will come up. A little bit of dexterity required here. There we go. So I'm prying with the Exacto knife as I turn, and that gets past the strip threads. So let's wiggle this loose a little bit. See if I can get it out. There we go. So there is your bottom bearing that has your brushes. You may wish to check the condition of your commutator while you're in here. Let's see if I can get this to focus on it. Yes, no, maybe. That's yeah, a little better. So anyway, the commutator is this little brass insert here, uh, which transfers the electrical current to the brushes inside the uh, coils inside the motor, and the brushes do the job of transferring the energy through the commutator to that through here. So now that we've got it apart, we can put some more of that oil in the bottom bearing. And I'm just going to briefly check the condition of the brushes and make sure there's no scoring or burning or anything like that, which it doesn't appear to be. Looks pretty good. If you want, um, you can see, or maybe you can't see, again, I need to get the damn camera to focus. There we go. Uh, there's a score mark on the commutator. And you may wish to clean that up. And that's actually straightforward. You can do that. I'm going to show you how in just a moment here. I use a Dremel tool with a very fine wire brush. And I will coat this in deoxit as I go around it in a circular motion with the uh, brush Dremel tool to clean it up and polish it. And that will aid in the motor's longevity. So let's get to that. 
Okay, so we got the deoxid on there. We got our Dremel. Let's clean this up. Headphone users, beware. Okay, so now you can see here that it's nice and shiny. There's no more grooves on it. So that should be uh, much better. Now let's get this motor back together. Now the fun part is always getting the brushes back in there without damaging anything. And so what I do is I very carefully try to spread the brushes apart. The little dampening pad on this one's coming apart. Joy. Whatever you do, don't use excessive force. This is a slow process and you just have to take your time. Now when the brushes are really tight together like this one and they don't want to come apart easily on their own, you may need to get a little dexterous. And I use a, a tool with a hook on it like that. And what I'm going to attempt to do is pull the brush aside as I stick the commutator down in there. And again, this sucks, but this is how you do it. I don't know if you guys can see anything. I'm sorry if you can't. But... I use the hook tool to pull the brushes around on the commutator. Okay, and then do a quick rotation, make sure there's no noise. So it's nice and clean. Hey, that bearing works pretty well now. You can do this on a last ditch, as a last ditch effort on your tired old DC motor. Assuming it's disassemblable like this Panasonic one is. Some of them are pretty well sealed. The Panasonic motor, aka Matsushita, or Matsushita, uh, they do come apart, and it appears as though I've gotten the positioning of the screw holes wrong. Yep, these are keyed in a certain way, but that's not a big deal. You rotate it till I see all three holes. Got one there. Nope, not one there. Okay, let's try rotating it this way. I got one there, I got one there, and I got one there. All right, that's the correct orientation. Let's put our screws back in. You notice how I haven't even bothered to clean the belt chunk off of there yet because there's no point in doing any real service on this until you've made sure that the motor's alive. If the motor isn't alive, don't bother. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to edit this. This is taking a little bit longer than I thought, and I don't want to eat up too much space on the camera. So, okay, motor's back together in that sense. Put the rubber insulator on. And we're going to shove the motor back in its housing. And you may wish to orient things so that the cables exit easily. Make sure that's seated in there right. And then of course, put the little insulator pad back here, like so. And then put the cover back on, like so. Okay, now we need to find the little screw. Here it is. And put this back in. Okay, so the motor's all back together. 
Let's uh, mount it back up to the turntable chassis, and then we'll clean the gunk off the pulley. Well, we got the motor back in there, and I go to plug the thing in to test it, and I discover we don't have a line cord. So I'm going to strip this back and attach a cheater to it, and then we'll try again. So we've got the thing in here, but it's turning counterclockwise instead of clockwise. So that tells me that when I put the commutator back in, the brushes are touching the wrong sides of the commutator. It's reversing the polarity. That's easy enough to change. But we have verified that the motor has lots of torque and it is stable. So other than the minor error that I made during reassembly, that motor's fixed. So in the next parts of the video, once I get the motor back in, we'll address servicing the belt goo and getting the uh, cartridge set up. I think this cartridge on here is probably dead. Oops, sorry about that. So we'll get back to that and uh, once we have another video, uh, I'll splice them all together and you can see the rest of the service. Okay, so now we fixed the uh, problem with the motor, which is just that when I reassembled it, the brushes uh, were touching the wrong sides of the commutator, essentially reversing polarity. So now it turns uh, counterclockwise. So let's get to cleaning the belt goo off. You will need paper towels and alcohol, a scraping tool, whether it be a screwdriver or what have you, exacto knife, whatever. And basically the way that you do this is, is you just scrape the stuff stuck on there off, like I'm doing here, sorry about that. Scrape it off. It will eat things, so don't be surprised if your little labels or whatever it's stuck to die. You just want to get the big chunks off. And the stuff that's tarry looking is the stuff that you're going to have to clean off of the alcohol. I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing here. I'm watching this and not watching the camera at the same time. So again, here we go. Scrape it off. Try to get as much of it off of there with a knife or something as you can. This stuff is corrosive too, by the way, so you can see it's eating the paint underneath where it lived. If I can just hold this still. Sorry for the jitters. I have nerve problems that oftentimes keep me from holding stuff still. Yeah. Again, we're just going to scrape off this here, as much of it up as we can. Don't get this stuff on your clothes, because you'll never get it out. So, okay, so we got that now. Let's get a paper towel or something. Shop towel in this case. And we're just going to get all the loose gunk off of here. And the rest you can clean off with Q-tip and an alcohol, or an alcohol and Q-tip. As far as the motor pulley, I usually will just turn the thing on, let it spin, and run an exacto in front of it. get all the loose chunks off. The heavy stuff you'll still have to scrape off, but this will get most of it off. So, since that's pretty much not doing a whole lot, I guess we'll scrape off the remainder. Isn't this fun? <laughs> That's not exactly what I wanted to be doing this morning, but I figured you guys would like to see how you really service a turntable and why we really charge what we charge to do this stuff. Because people just think it needs the belt. Well, no. The motor is frozen. It needs the belt crud cleaned off. And it definitely needs a cartridge because the stylus protrusion sucks. 
and I don't have a spare stylus for that ancient order phone. This is really what you have to do in order to get it to work. So I'm going to finish cleaning the rest of this pulley off and then we'll clean up the uh, base here with alcohol and whatever else and then we'll get a belt on this thing and see how well it keeps speed and get to the rest of the service. Okay so we got the uh, belt goo cleaned up and we've got a belt goo or we've got a uh, belt on there with 25.0 is a little bit uh, really needs to be on that pulley a little better okay I'm just making sure that it's gonna stay on there so now we'll turn it on queue up and see how it runs Let's see if we can adjust the speed oh touch the speed control it jumps everywhere okay this is pretty common of uh, adjustable pitch designs. The pitch controls get oxidized and the speed jumps everywhere. So let's do a quick shot of deox in those. Okay, so I've cleaned the switches and controls of deox it. Let's try this again and see if the speed will stabilize. And yeah, let's see. Awesome. Let's go to 45. Cool. Let's uh, cue down and see if it will lift at the end. Yes, it does. And it returns and shuts off. Cool. So the motor and everything on this is now working properly. You see what a bit of a nightmare it was to fix. The next thing we need to address, other than the busted line cord, which I'll fix at a later time, is the cartridge. Now this is a standard Japanese socket tone arm. So the cartridge carrier comes out exposing what you need to replace. Now I could probably just get another order phone needle for this, but I don't really care for this uh, cartridge. It's not my favorite. This one's got a bit of a protrusion problem. I might have a spare stylus. In fact, I think I do. So we'll swap those out and then see if it will actually play a record. So let's get to that. Okay, so now the, here's the big test. We're going to see if it will play. The queuing is way too high. Or there's a way to tweak that. Yeah, it looks like there is. There's a little set screw back there. I'm going to adjust that and then we'll, uh, well, actually, let's just see if it plays first. Cue down. No left channel. Got right channel, but no left channel. Bad RCAs. So we got to replace them too. Okie dokie. Well, let's see if it lifts up. Yes, it does. And then turns itself off. Well, this thing's just been all sorts of fun lately. So I guess the next thing we do is replace the RCA cables. So you can see with the bottom off, the RCA cables are really easy to get to. You just remove the little shield piece here and the cable clamp. So let's just pull these guys out. This cable can just go bye bye. That was easy.
and cut the ground wire. We're going to leave that in there. I'm going to show you a modification you can do to internally ground these things. Let me get a new cable prepped and then we'll install it. All right, I got a cable prepped and fed through here. Remember, always heat the work, not the part. There's one. There's two. There's three, and here comes the fourth one. Okay, so the cable soldered in. Now I told you that I left the ground wire in here, and the ground wire is going to be connected to the minus of the left and right. Now, since most amplifier chassis are at the ground RCA chassis potential, you can just connect the two negatives of the RCAs together and to the ground point, and that will get rid of most, uh, if not all, uh, hum problems. So I'm going to strip about a half inch off here, and then I'm going to strip back a quarter inch off here very carefully. Twist this up. And then we'll solder the exposed portions. And then we'll attach the negative of the right channel. Then the negative of the left channel. Get a little more solder on that. Okay. Now we'll get the shield back on here. Assuming I can do that. There's a second part of a cable clamp. Which goes down here. And there's the third part of a cable clamp. Which goes right here. So let's just gently fit the bottom back on. Flip the turntable up. And let's do our test again and see if we get both sides. Oh, it wants to cycle. Let's let it finish its cycle. Got a left side. Got a right side.
Cool. So that takes care of that problem. I'm going to adjust the queuing height a little bit and then we'll consider this one done. We'll start putting it back together. Okay, so everything's all back together. Um, the last thing I might note to you is that a dust cover that came with it was pretty shoddy looking. Now, if you don't mind sitting and polishing something for about a half an hour, get yourself a bottle of Novus Number no. 2. You can get it at Rid Out Plastics and various other places that sell plastic products. You just put a bunch of it on there, rub it in with a shop towel or terry cloth, whatever you want to use, just like you're buffing out your car. And it will take care of most of the scary scratches and stuff. I've used that for a long time, and it uh, works really good. We did find a better stylus on this, which does stick at the proper protrusion level. And uh, this one will get cleaned up a little bit more and then sold. Uh, so keep an eye out on eBay or Craigslist or whatever you see in the San Diego area for this thing. It's actually a pretty nice turntable. It weighs a ton. And that will give you an idea as to what's required to service one of these things with a DC motor. Again, some DC motors are not completely disassemblable, so you can't always do the rebuild like we did today. Uh, but if you can, it's a great way to preserve the life of the turntable a little bit longer. I, uh, again, hope this video was very helpful to you guys, and I enjoy making them for you. So uh, do feel free to share it with your friends, family, and uh, whomever else, hobbyists, that you like to do uh, electronic repairs with. Anyways, thanks for watching the video. More to come soon.